In our world, we have many, many forces in place. I guess we could call them the laws of the universe. I'm talking about gravitational forces, electromagnetic forces, frequencies, and the forces that govern space-time. Now, every once in a while, actually more often than not, there is an anomaly. The forces change, they are altered or disrupted. I'm not talking about something like an energy vortex where you can go to certain areas around the world where you may feel the change in the energy around you, no. I'm talking about something that comes to you. In this case, I want to talk about time anomalies, particularly time dilation for this presentation. You see, all this time we have been taking these forces for granted, and so we expect that they will continue to work the way they have been working all this time. And the reason I bring that up is because some of us, if not all of us, at some point in the near future, we may experience some type of time anomaly or fluctuation in time. I guess the best way I can describe it is, imagine you are out somewhere, maybe you are out shopping at a grocery store, and you notice the person shopping next to you moving slowly, just slow enough for you to notice. Now, that may not even come across as strange, you may just think that the person just move slow. Or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe you witness someone moving faster. It may be almost imperceptible at first until you hear that it is happening to other people. Now stay with me here. This won't take much time. So, in the past, for a long time, people were following the laws of physics according to Newton. These laws did work out in the normal speed of time in our environment, but they didn't work at higher speeds, getting closer to the speed of light. So later on, Einstein published the theory of relativity. Newton theorized that time was absolute. In other words, you take a clock here on Earth and then take it out and onto another planet, the speed of time will be the same. Einstein, however, believed that the speed of time was relative. With time dilation, you have in the equation both gravity and velocity. So, because of relative velocity, if you had two clocks that are synchronized, you place one on the ground and the other you put inside an airplane. The idea is that time moves faster for the clock that is on the ground than the clock that is in the air moving. The difference between the two increases as the speed or velocity of the plane increases. Now with this example, we are only talking about a difference of microseconds. This is why you need an atomic clock to be able to measure the difference. As you get closer to the speed of light, time slows significantly. And at the speed of light, time seems to stand still. Let's say there are two people, Mike and Samantha. They are both exactly 30 years old. Mike gets an opportunity to participate in an experiment where he is put on board a spacecraft that travels at incredibly high speeds. I'm talking about 99% the speed of light. So Mike begins the experiment while Samantha waits here on the surface. He travels around in space for five years, then he returns, and then he finds Samantha. But she appears much older than he thought. 
She then tells him that it's been 35 years since he left. They demonstrate this theory in the movie Interstellar, if you haven't seen that film. It's actually called the Twin Paradox. The forces of gravity and terms of mass play a role in time dilation as well. The more mass of the object, the more gravity, the more time moves slowly. The less gravity you have, the faster time moves. Now, even though you have gravity versus velocity, velocity always wins over gravitational forces. So let me show you something here. Neuroscience. The man who saw time stand still. One day a man saw time itself stop. And as David Robson discovers, unpicking what happened is revealing that we can all experience temporal trickery too. This briefly discusses the case of Simon Baker who went into the bathroom to take a shower. He turned on the shower and the water came out of the shower head in slow motion like a scene out of the matrix. But let me show you examples of what other people have claimed to experience. Although Baker is perhaps the most dramatic case, a smattering of strikingly similar accounts can be found intermittently in medical literature. There are reports of time speeding up, so-called Zeitreffer phenomenon, and also more fragmentary experiences called kindopsia in which motion momentarily stops. For instance, traveling home one day, one 60-year-old woman reported that movement of the closing train doors and fellow passengers was in slow motion and broken up as if in freeze frames. A 58-year-old Japanese man, meanwhile, seemed to be experiencing life like a badly dubbed movie. In conversation, he found that although others' voices sounded normal, they were out of sync with their faces. There may be many more unreported cases, says Afsu, since it's a transient phenomenon. It could often be overlooked. In that article, you will find that there are attributing this phenomenon to people's minds playing tricks on them, which I have no doubt that is the case for many individuals, but... What about the people whose experiences you cannot explain? Of course, when you have subjects like this out there, there are people with stories. In another article titled Time Standing Still, there is a story from Phil Healy about a car crash he was involved with. He says, I turned a corner to see a tow truck stop suddenly in front of me. I put on the brakes just in time, only for my passengers to tell me we were about to be hit by a bus from behind. I recall looking at them, listening to their explanation, and then looking behind me to see the bus hit the car and knock us into the tow truck. The event seemed to happen very slowly, yet our actions occurred at normal speed. How I was able to talk to my passengers and see the bus hit us, and then turn around and see the tow truck in front of us come closer, I do not know. I've always described it as time appearing to go slowly. Andrew Arthur Prescott talked about his experience, saying, I do not have good reactions and am somewhat uncoordinated. Poor at sports. When my son was small, we put him on a high playground slide when he was still too top-heavy. He seemed to fall to one side and over the edge, and I seemed to have all the time in the world to move to catch him. Another example here, for most people, a time warp is a one-off experience, but David Bull says he has seen the world in slow motion on numerous occasions. Like Healy, he saw a car crash in excruciating detail and saw everyone on the stairs in the London underground moving abnormally slowly. He also describes a more prolonged experience after surfing where he found it strangely difficult to judge the speed of his car. I would drive at 100 kilometers per hour, which for the first 30 minutes of driving felt like about maybe 5 to 10 kilometers per hour. So, as we move forward in time, 
I believe more and more of us are going to experience this type of phenomenon on a much broader scale that is not just experienced by one person at the time of the event. If you've been watching this show, you may have heard me discuss the possibility of our solar system being a binary star system with a distant second sun closing in, you know, Planet X. If this object does indeed exist, then as it closes in, we could experience significant changes in not only the climate and biology, but changes in space-time as well. Those changes, of course, would be the result of changes of radiation coming from the sun and exotic cosmic radiation as well as changes in magnetism and gravitational forces. This would not just result in time dilation, but also time distortion. Time distortion is a bit different as we are talking about a distortion in one's perception of time. For example, people losing the ability to gauge how much time has passed or they feel as though time is speeding up. This has more to do with the senses as the forces around us change with it. But it will be mistaken for some type of neural malfunction, another mind trick. Probably the scariest and most profound occurrence may be time warps. Imagine being thrown into the future by a few seconds, a jump in time. Maybe you see a person in one room, you leave that person, walk out of the room and into another room, and the person you just left is already in the other room before you can get there. A jump in time. People may seem to be frozen in time for half a second, or maybe someone tells you that you seemed to be frozen in time for a second there. Since the start of this COVID event, numerous people have reported a sense of time distortion. And they explain that away with blaming it on stress. Come on, man. They really think you guys are dumb. They won't even bother to investigate it. They just want you to think you're losing your mind. Only time will tell if these forces affect us in the near future. And if they do change to the point where we are having multiple space-time anomalies, you can bet that it has something to do with what is outside of the planet, inside the planet, I'm talking about magma, and the radiation increase on the planet. To what degree? I can only imagine. So, until next time, folks, I just wanted to give you all something to ponder for the day, as there is more madness to come. I hope you all enjoyed your weekend and look forward to having an exciting week. Everyone be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com. There will be videos uploaded to the site that are not available here on YouTube, which means more content throughout the week. So stay tuned and watch out for that. God bless everyone. Remember, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.